So behind me right there, I have a couple of mice in the setup on the mouse mat that we're going to be comparing against the Death Adder V2 Pro. What I'm thinking of doing as well is making like a full in-depth comparison video, but I mean, it's going to be going over like the features of the Death Adder V2 Pro. This is today's focus right here, as you can tell by the title, of course, but full disclosure as well, Razer did send me the Death Adder V2 Pro mouse but they aren't like paying me for a review. And the other two mice right there, I've bought myself like with my own money and everything. So we're just gonna talk about this one today, give you guys my opinion about it. Cause I have been using it for the last, I think it's been over a month since I've had the new batch of like wireless Razer gear that includes a headset as well that I need to make a video about the Black Shark V2 Pro. Very good wireless headset from Razer, but this is today's focus right here. So let's head into the setup right here. I'll give you guys my opinion about it and we'll compare this mouse, the Death Adder V2 Pro against the Viper Ultimate, which fell asleep right here. And then we have the Basilisk Ultimate over here as well. Maybe you want a Basilisk mouse, maybe you want a Death Adder. I'll kind of give you guys my opinion about all three. So hopefully you can make a better decision when buying a mouse or maybe you don't want any of these, you know. You can, you can buy whatever mouse you want, man, but as with all my videos, there will be plenty of links in the video description down below to this mouse, the other mice, and of course, everything else in the gaming setup. There'll be links to Amazon and the Razer store in case you want to go buy anything. So far, like this, this mouse has honestly been like a dream come true for me at least. A wireless death adder is what I've always wanted. And Razer, Razer have made a lot of people happy, I bet, by releasing this into the market. It's an awesome mouse. So, I'm Em, welcome to Tech Block. Let's jump into the Death Adder V2 Pro review. Now, over the last little while, I've kind of been switching in between these three mice right here. The Basilisk Ultimate, which is the heaviest of the three mice we have right here. And also, probably the one you'd least want to be using for like eSports. Then we have the Viper Ultimate right here, which was my go-to mouse. Uh, before I got my hands on the Death Adder V2 Pro. They do look kind of similar, but the Viper Ultimate is an ambidextrous mouse. I hope I pronounced that right, but it's for left-handed and right-handed people. That's what the Viper Ultimate is for, but it does have one advantage over the Death Adder V2 Pro, and that is the weight of it. This is actually a slightly lighter mouse than the Death Adder V2 Pro, albeit by a couple grams here, but you can still kind of notice it, especially if you're like, you know, picking the mice up side by side. You can notice that, hey, the Viper Ultimate, this one's a little bit lighter. And for esports, personally, I am a big fan of wireless mice that are lightweight. All of these mice, I would say they have very similar, uh, very comparable battery life. Although the Death Adder V2 Pro, this one kind of stands out because you can increase the battery life of this one ever so slightly. If you switch the Death Adder V2 Pro to a Bluetooth connection instead of the 2.4 gigahertz dongle that you can use, which is the Razer Hyperspeed super fast wireless connection via like a USB dongle that you plug into your PC and then you would switch at the bottom of the mouse. There's actually like a little toggle where you can switch between the 2.4 gigahertz super quick wireless speed that you would want to be using if you're playing like, you know, first person shooter games where you're going to be flicking your mouse real quick and you need like absolute maximum responsiveness, maximum accuracy, all of that. You would want to be using the hyperspeed mode. Alternatively, if you're not doing like crazy high speed, like esports flicks and everything, you can switch to Bluetooth, which is something neither of the other two mice have right here. The Basilisk Ultimate nor the Viper Ultimate, neither of them have any sort of Bluetooth support. Whereas the Death Adder V2 Pro has Bluetooth. So you can actually go ahead and save a USB port on your PC and solely rely on Bluetooth if that's what you want to do. If you're not playing, you know, super competitive games like esports stuff and you're just doing like casual gaming or you're just browsing the internet, you can go ahead and switch to Bluetooth and you'll probably not notice any sort of delay really or any kind of like lack of responsiveness of the mouse just because you're using Bluetooth. You would get about 120 hours out of this mouse if you use Bluetooth and 70 hours of battery life if you use the normal USB hyperspeed dongle mode. You can go ahead and dock the mouse onto a Razer charging dock for your mouse, which is unfortunately sold separately, but you can get somewhat of a good deal on it. If you buy the mouse as a bundle with the charging dock, then, then you can save some money. But 
in order to charge your mice and everything, it's super easy. You can go ahead and dock your mouse on the charging dock. The connectors are going to make contact and your mouse will begin charging and the mouse will actually light up a different color based on the battery percentage that it currently is at. The Basilisk Ultimate right now is very low on battery, hence why it's lighting up red right now. Whereas the Death Adder V2 Pro, if we dock this mouse on here, so at the moment, this one's lighting up orange, probably about like 50% battery life, something like that. But if you don't want to use the wireless charging dock as the only way to charge your mouse, luckily there is an alternative. Don't you worry. You can plug each one of these mice in via a micro USB cable that you would typically be plugging into the dock right here. Instead, you can switch any one of these mice using the exact same cable to a wired mode and then use the mice in wired mode whilst you also charge them. It's brilliant. So every single mouse is wireless and wired. But for the Death Adder V2 Pro, this also has Bluetooth. So like bonus points for the Death Adder V2 Pro here. These three mice do have a couple more similarities as well. They all share the same Razer Focus Plus 20,000 DPI optical sensor. And one of my favorite features of this sensor as well is that it features adjustable liftoff range. So you can go ahead and configure between one millimeter, two millimeter and three millimeters of liftoff range. So you could have the mouse lifted up three millimeters above the surface and it would still be tracking. Or you could set it all the way down to one millimeter and you could play around with these settings and find what works best for you. Very good sensor. I approve of this one. And one final thing to mention as well, these mice, although the Razer Death Adder seems to have second generation Razer optical mouse switches, which is apparently three times faster than mechanical switches, 70 million click durability, which is insane, and then eliminates unintended double clicks. But personally, uh, neither of these mice have had any kind of problems with the sensor, nor have they had any problems with the mouse switches. The only thing that I personally had like a problem with isn't even the Razer mice right here. In fact, it's their wireless charger right here, their charging dock. That is the one thing that I feel like Razer really could improve on because whenever I dock my mice to charge on this, 90% of the time, it's fine. Especially the Death Adder V2 Pro, when I dock this mouse, charges straight away, no problemo. I dock the Basilisk Ultimate. You notice that? It's still blinking away. It's not charging. So you gotta kinda like jiggle it about on the charging dock and then pray that like the connector lines up and it begins charging. There you go, now charging, brilliant. Uh, and then the Viper Ultimate, this one, I don't know, it's not been wanting to charge whatsoever on the charging dock today, but I've not been using this one myself recently. I've been mainly focusing on the Death Adder V2 Pro and I've given the Viper Ultimate to my roommate because, you know, he'd, he's, he's never had a wireless mouse before. Gave him that to try out. I think he's been enjoying it so far, but he also has the same problem with a different charging dock as well So like charging dock definitely needs improvement But apart from that the mice on their own they're they're fine And if you don't mind plugging them in via the front to charge them you could do without the wireless charger It's not like a must-have thing like you must buy the wireless charger, but it is kind of nice especially when it works like when the wireless dock works, it's, it's great. Like I'd absolutely recommend it, but from my testing so far, it's not perfect and definitely needs work. I've gone ahead and opened up Razer Synapse. This is the program that you use to configure your mouse, adjust the settings. For example, the wireless power saving can be adjusted right here. The mouse can enter a sleep mode as soon as like, you know, one minute of the mouse being idle, it can enter into a sleep mode and you can actually probably save a significant amount of battery life if you do this. Also, what I would highly recommend that you do, unless you're like absolutely obsessed with maximum brightness RGB lighting for whatever reason, uh, I get it, I get it. But if you do want better battery life, honestly, I've, I reckon it's worth sacrificing the brightness. Now you can turn it down like, you know, even like, I don't know, 1% and you can just barely see it. But honestly, I reckon it is very much worth turning down the brightness of your wireless peripherals, the RGB lighting, you know, if you don't care about the lighting or your mouse having a light up logo, in fact, you could even turn the whole thing off and you would probably save an incredible amount of battery life. I would much rather have my mouse last a couple more hours, if not a couple more days, if I just reduce the brightness. So that's like a word of advice right there. If you're using a wireless mouse, you can turn down the brightness and hopefully 
save a lot of battery life. You can also adjust the sensitivity of the mouse by heading over to the performance tab. And we actually have buttons built in on this mouse for sensitivity up and down. So we can go ahead and press the up one. We can max that out, go down, go all the way down to 400. And each one of these stages is configurable. So you can go ahead and type in whatever you want. And you can even adjust the X axis and the Y axis individually. I play on 550 DPI in case anyone's wondering. I know it's like crazy low, but you can also adjust the polling rate of the mouse, which is like how many times per second the mouse sends a signal to your PC. You can turn this all the way down to 125 polling rate, which might result in better battery life. Although I would probably recommend you stick to a thousand. I'm not sure if it would make that big of a difference. I reckon turning the lighting off would probably make the biggest difference. And if we head over to the customize tab right here, we can reprogram just about everything in the mouse. The scroll click can do a completely different function if that's what you want. We have multimedia macros. We have like, you can launch a program by scroll clicking. You can get very creative, do whatever you want, set up whatever macros you want. We even have like inter device like They've updated this and they're like always adding new stuff onto this. It's honestly great. If you're into making custom macros and everything and just, you know, you press one button and then like 10 things happen. If you're a professional and you know, you're, you're video editing and you need macro keys to speed up your workflow, then this, this could be it, man. Not sure if I mentioned this already, but the mouse of course does have forward buttons, back buttons, you know, when you're browsing the web or within like Windows Explorer, you can use forward and back, of course, on the side, great. And of course there is sensitivity up and down. That can also be reprogrammed. The only thing that cannot be reprogrammed is your left click, but I think that's fine. I don't think that's a bad thing. Calibration is something I mentioned earlier on in the video, the whole lift off distance. This is it right here. I play on one millimeter of tracking distance. So my mouse has to be, you know, one millimeter or well, maximum of like one millimeter off of the surface and it's still tracking, but you can turn it up to three millimeters and you will actually notice a difference. It is a very small difference. You know, we're talking millimeters here, but you can notice a difference between one and three. This is like, you know, such a minor adjustment, but if you're a professional and you want the absolute, like, you know, perfect mouse set up so you can get the most accurate and consistent shots, then this might be a feature that you really, really like and might actually help you improve your aim, for example. But that's probably most things covered in terms of software. You can go ahead and go into like manual calibration. Personally, I don't mess with this and instead I stick to smart tracking. I reckon this works fine and I don't think you really have to spend time manually calibrating to like a special surface, which in this case is like, you know, just a bunch of razor mouse mats, but there is a custom one that you can like create your own surface. But yeah, you can play around with this if you want, but personally, I would just recommend you stick to smart tracking. Also within Razer Synapse, you can actually check the battery percentage as well, which is good. So the Basilisk, this one is the one flashing red all the time. This is on 3%, hence why it's flashing red and really needs to be charged. Whereas the Death Adder V2 Pro is currently at 41% and the Viper isn't currently plugged in because I ran out of USB ports. I don't want three mice plugged into my PC, I'll be honest. And in case you're wondering, yes, the mouse does have RGB lighting only on the Razer logo. We don't have LED lighting on the scroll wheel, nor do we have any kind of like other lights all around the mouse, only on the Razer logo, but that's probably all right. You're gonna save battery life anyway. And you can of course do some crazy stuff and sync up this mouse and the color effects with like nano leaf LED light panels, for example. The rest of your chroma peripherals can also sync up together. And of course, your PC internals can also sync up and change colors at the exact same time as this mouse. So Razer Chroma compatible. I approve of the RGB. Not crazy amount of lighting on this mouse, but it's enough. And in case you're wondering about the size of my hands, I do not have big hands. I would actually say I have rather small hands, but the Viper Ultimate right here, this is the smallest of the three mice. And you can actually see that it has like less of a hump compared to the Death Adder V2 Pro and the Basilisk. These two mice have a rather similar shape in terms of like the hump at the back and the ergonomics of the mouse, obviously. And then the Viper Ultimate is the smallest of the three mice right here. The Death Adder is like a nice in-between, in between these three mice right here. Slightly bigger, there's a nice hump, of course. Very good ergonomics for right-handed people. You got your forward and back buttons there, of course. And finally, we have the Basilisk Ultimate, which has a rather different design. If I put these two side by side, this has like a lovely 
place to rest your thumb. And honestly, this area right here is the main reason why this Basilisk Ultimate Mouse is so incredibly comfortable. Even for someone like me who doesn't have gigantic hands, this mouse right here just feels incredible in my hand. I would even say this feels nicer in my hand than the Death Adder V2 Pro, but this is the lighter mouse and I would prefer using this instead of this when playing games like Counter-Strike, for example. That's kind of my video about the Death Adder V2 Pro. Honestly, a dream come true for me, for so many people. Wireless Death Adder, it's finally here. I know I'm kind of late to the party because this has been around for a little while, but I wanted to put it through a bunch of testing before I made a video about it. Although I have been thinking and I will be bringing back the normal unboxing videos that I used to make all the time whenever there would be like a new Razer product released you'd see an unboxing video from Tech Block straight away so I'm gonna try bring those back so thank you all so much for watching hopefully it's been a helpful video maybe you're looking to buy one of these mice and you know hopefully you can make a better decision when buying it now so thanks so much for watching as always links are down below in the video description to where you can buy these mice on Amazon or on the Razer site it is in stock I did check uh, yeah Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye.